Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome in the Minnesota Vikings. Now, by Chat Sports for our live free agency coverage here on day two of NFL free agency. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the show. And let's start it off by getting our chat going and giving you guys some shout outs so you guys can show off your purple pride. If you guys could just give me a skull down below and we can start chopping it up because the two biggest signings that the Vikings have made so far are around Sam Darnold, the new QB1 in Minnesota, and then also Aaron Jones signing a one-year $7 million deal. I got some deep kind of analytics and stats that uh, may change your mind on these two because I think these two, specifically Aaron Jones, was a hell of a signing for Kwesi. And, man, I think Kwesi's cooking right now. As Skull Productions is saying that in the chat, Kwesi cooking, man. You love to see it. No doubt. I think he's had a great free agency. And – I do definitely think that, um, you know, Kwesi was uh, not on the hot seat heading into his free agency, but there was definitely some expectations on what he needs to, you know, obviously you know, get done. As Borse in the chat. What up, Borse? I haven't watched you in a long time, buddy. How you doing, Borse? Welcome in. Borse, how are you feeling about the signings of Sam Darnold and Aaron Jones? Vikings have their new quarterback and new running back moving forward. Um, yeah, Winding Pie saying Kwesi actually, or actively silencing the doubters, and I feel like he needed to, because, you know, you start looking back at some of the key moves that he's made. Obviously, you go back to 2022 draft class. You draft Lewis Seen, you draft Andrew Booth, you know, you draft, like, even Ed Ingram, you know, I think he's done all right so far in uh, the start of the NFL career, but that, that draft class was definitely on the hot seat. Take it the following year. Like, even last year's draft class, it was all right. But you had a good pick in Jordan Addison. He's going to end up working out. But, again, he didn't really make any big-time moves. He hasn't really found, like, a third or fourth rounder or fifth rounder that's really worked out. And then he brought in Marcus Davenport last season. That didn't work out. Byron Murphy was all right. But, again, I think Kwesi has kind of answered some of the noise here as Jay saying, are they re-signing J.J.? Man, I hope so. Uh, J.J., I think that's probably the next move for me. I think it would be right now – Sending Justin Jefferson. We've got Rocky in the chat saying need to re-sign Dalton Reisner. Don't, no doubt. I think the Vikings need to get better in the trenches still. Maybe get an offensive guard. Maybe get a defensive lineman. Um, and really got to solidify that, you know, the, the trenches for this football team. Because I think we've seen that kind of where the Vikings are kind of taking this. is I think they want to kind of replicate what the 49ers have done. Where they get a complete roster. You got a ton of good weapons. And then you get a quarterback in place. Gold production saying DJ Reader signing would say or would give me life. Yeah, no doubt. DJ Reader, if the Vikings could somehow pull off DJ Reader and I'll say Dalton Reisner as offensive guard because I think he wants to be back and he may be back on a cheaper deal. But we'll get to this now. This is the poll question I had. I want you guys to grade the Vikings free agency so far. How are you like, let's just say it ended right now, or how do you feel right now? What letter grade? would you give to Kwesi Adolfo Mensa? I think I'm going to give him an A-. minus. And I know you may be saying, no way you're giving an A-. minus. You know, we got Sam Darnold starting at quarterback, yada, yada, yada. No, but I really do believe it. I think moving off Kirk Cousins, the more I sat on that, I think that was the right decision for them to make, no doubt, as Boris is saying A, Jace is saying B, Skull Production saying B for sure, Roger Bond going B. Raj, I know you're going to want Daniel Hunter back. Maybe if, maybe if Daniel Hunter somehow gets brought back, maybe the Vikings, maybe you'll give him an A or uh, around there. It's Eric Mott giving A. Jace now going up to a B plus. Um, Cameron Thompson saying, is we still getting J.J. McCarthy? Um, yeah, so if you guys didn't know, so DraftKings and like FanDuel and all these sports books, they'll put out like, they'll put out like odds to draft the next quarterback or odds to draft J.J. McCarthy. And as it stands right now, the Vikings are at plus 130. And originally before Kirk Cousins left, it was at plus 300. So I think after that Kirk Cousins move, I think a lot of these bookmakers out West starting to connect some dots here. And maybe they're saying like Vikings are prime trade up candidate to that number five overall spot. It looks like the top three picks are taking their projected pick. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be quarterback for the, the first three picks. But then you start looking at number five chargers. Maybe they want to trade back, get more draft capital because Jim Harbaugh obviously is very familiar with this draft class coming out. Maybe you're sitting there thinking like, Man, we go trade up to five and get J.J. McCarthy. Is Eric LaPointe in the chat? What's going on, Eric? How you doing? Welcome into the show. Kirko Lame saying, A, love these changes. I do too. It's a new era in Minnesota. I think the Vikings are, uh, 
Vikings are definitely a big winner, in my opinion, right now in free agency. A skull production saying, I'm hearing Hunter to Atlanta. Rumors heating up a bit. Yeah, it, uh, they are. Um, Kirk Cousins, I mean, Daniil Hunter, I think he's either going to go to the Dallas Cowboys, either Cowboys, Commanders, or I could see Atlanta. But a team's going to throw him the bag. Jay saying, I think we are making it to the playoffs. I think we got a chance. I think when you signed Sam Darnold, you gave yourself a fighting chance to make it. Foolish Menace saying, Quasi, please sign either Reisner or Tomlinson. Love both those. And draft Cooper BB at left guard, and our old line would be rocks out. Yeah, so I love the Cooper BB pick. Get him in the second round. Third round, maybe. Probably going to have to take him in the second round. But, man, I love Cooper BB. He's going to be a stud out of Kansas State. And see your offensive lineman. Vikings, he makes some noise there. And if you could say, this is your complete offensive line. It's Darisaw, that left guard spot of either Cooper Beebe or Dalton Reisner, Garrett Bradbury at center, right guard Ed Ingram, hopefully he continues to develop, and then Brian O'Neill with all the weapons, with the run game, with the offensive-minded head coach, with Sam Darnold, who we'll dive into here in a little bit, uh, a little bit more in depth. But I think it's just good. I think it's just good moves for the Vikes so far. As Eric saying, it's time for KOC to really step up this season now that he can coach a quarterback. I agree. I mean, he is going to need to up his game this year. I think this is a, this is the era of Quasi and Kevin O'Connell. This is no longer the Kirk Cousins era or the Mike Zimmer, obviously, or the Rick Spielman. But I think this is the new era of Vikings football, and I think we're seeing the direction that uh, <laughs> that they want to go. It's DOD giving the Vikes an A minus. Uh, winding Pie, great question. He says, "Do you think um, ten million was too much for Sam Darnold?" Um. Not really, because listen, if it's a one-year deal, let's just say it was one year for seven million. I feel like people wouldn't even look at it any certain way. But you're getting a, at bare minimum, you're getting an elite backup and a great bridge quarterback. And let's just say he does work out. Let's just say Darnold takes that next step with all the weapons, with the offensive line, with the tackles, offensive head, uh, offensive-minded head coach. Like he was the third overall pick in the draft. He ran a four-eight. He's got a big-time arm. He's kind of got some Carson Wentz to him. And if you guys remember, Carson Wentz, when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles before he got hurt, he was a hell of a quarterback. He kind of had some gunslinger to him. And maybe KOC can kind of sandpaper his game. And, man, I really do think Sam Darnold's going to work out. Skull Production saying, nope, that's the QB market right now, 100%. Um, Skull Production's like, that's why I really don't get where people are like, oh, why would the Vikings go give all that money to Sam Darnold? Like, Jacoby Brissett got nine mil. Jones Gray B plus uh, to match up with Chandler. Yeah, so let me get to some Aaron Jones numbers here that I think I think this will kind of entice you guys and uh, kind of make you guys realize how good he is. So this is some numbers here from Aaron Jones. So R O or R Y O E rushing yards over expected. I showed these numbers a lot on the channel when we were talking about Dalvin Cook and kind of talking about his fall off. So this is a next gen stat. Um, from the NFL, and rushing yards over expected is any run play. PFF will go in, or any you know analytical you know website will go in and will say, all right, on this run, we expected the running back to get three yards. And if they get more than that, they'll give them plus however many yards. Or if they get less than that, they'll give them negative yards. Kirk Cousins, uh, I mean, Dalvin Cook, uh, one of the years, his last year with the Minnesota Vikings, was one of the worst in RYOE. Well, from week 16 on last season, all the way up to the divisional round, look who is number one on this list. It is new Vikings running back Aaron Jones at plus 151. Pretty incredible. Josh Allen also at plus 97. Pretty insane. But then you got some good names up there. James Conner had a great year for the Arizona Cardinals. Really hard-nosed runner. Derrick Henry, obviously you know what he's all about. And then Pacheco, he's a stud as well at plus 76. But look at this, man. Aaron Jones, for all the talk that, like, Oh, he might not have, you know, that much left in the tank. You know, he's 29 years old. He's had injury uh, issues in the past. Like, I totally understand that. But when you look at the numbers and you look at your eye, or you look at the eye test and you just look at the highlight tape, like, Aaron Jones still has a lot left in the tank. And just for a one-year kind of prove-it, chip-on-the-shoulder type of deal, like, I'm excited of the running back we're getting, and I really do believe. I think this was a huge kind of, if you want to kind of play head-to-head matchups here in the division, I think the Vikings got a whole lot better. I think the Packers actually got worse getting Josh Jacobs in there and letting Aaron Jones go. But overall, great move bringing in Aaron Jones. 
really excited to see what he's going to do. And that one-two punch of Ty Chandler, I think, is going to really move mountains for the Minnesota Vikings. But I'll get to all. Uh, I'll get to what you guys are saying in the chat here in a second. But I got to ask you guys help. I'm trying to get this live stream out to the most Vikings fans possible. So if you want the Vikings, even though they got Sam Darnold, if you want the Vikings still to draft a quarterback, whether that's Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, if you guys could help me out, just drop a like on today's show. If you guys could, I would really appreciate it. We're at 21 likes right now. If we could get the 30 likes, that would be pretty sick. And maybe if we get the 50 likes, hey, I got a little surprise for you guys. We got the Tito's in the building today. We're switching it up from the Patron. The bosses brought in Tito's today, a little... uh. In my opinion, I like Tito's more than Patron. But if you guys want the Vikings to still draft a quarterback like today's show, as I still think there's an incredible, it's incredibly likely that the Vikings do draft one, if not trade up for one. Here, I'll start it off. Um, Skull Production saying he still wants to draft a running back for sure. I totally get that. I would like to draft maybe a running back in maybe the late, late, late rounds, like maybe sixth or seventh round. But I actually, if I had to call it right now, I think the Vikings are good at that running back position for this season um winding pine saying i was hoping for tyrod taylor i agree i was hoping for tyrod as well but any decent qb can excel with what the vikings have to offer offer i agree like i was just thinking about it like think about this from your perspective everybody like the minnesota vikings as it stands right now i think they have probably the best landing spot for a rookie quarterback you got the best wide receiver in the league you got jordan addison you got here i'll show you guys i actually have a graphic for this right now like, the Vikings have a ton of, a ton of talent here. Let me just get this up for you guys. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here in a second. I am self-producing today's show, so if I'm moving a little slowly, uh, graphic, graphic, getting you guys stats up on screen, uh, just take it for that. But the Vikings are offering a ton of weapons here. And, you know, when you got Justin Jefferson as your wide receiver one, you got Jordan Addison as, Addison as your wide receiver two, TJ Hawkinson as your tight end one. Obviously, he is coming back from that knee surgery. But on top of that, you incorporate, you know, Aaron Jones in there. Like, that's probably one of the best weapon groups in the NFC. Besides the Niners and the Eagles, I'd take the Vikings weapons over about any other group possibly in the NFL. Um, honestly, I'd probably say the Vikings have the third best group of weapons in the entire National Football League. There's a lot of good players on this team still. And I really do think... Um, like, I really do think that, like, if you're a rookie quarterback, you are going to be kind of foaming at the mouth to get to Minnesota. And, listen, I wouldn't blame those guys at all. But I do want to tell you guys about our Super Chat menu today. You know, we kind of went live yesterday. It was a little kind of helter-skelter getting live. So we didn't wasn't really able to put together a Super Chat menu. But this is it for today. Every $5 Super Chat it will enter you into our March raffle here on the channel. I already got your guys' Super Chats from, I think it was two live shows ago, so we will still add those tickets in there. But this is the raffle. It's a little bedside um, Vikings floating helmet. You can literally spin it around. This thing's freaking sweet. Uh, runs for about, I think, like $69 or so. So, hey, you throw $5 in there at the end of the month on one of our live streams, we're going to spin a big old wheel, and we'll send this to one of your guys' store doorstep. So a $5 Super Chat gets you one ticket into there. And then this is my favorite one right now. I'm trying to have some fun on today's show. We got this little Shotsky machine here, or not machine, Shotsky plaque, I should say. So we added names on it last time. You see we got Eric Point, Vikings OG, Time Man the Buckeye, Roger, Vikings fan number one. If you guys send in a $10 Super Chat today, I'll sign your name on here, and I'll take a shot with you guys. And then if you guys you know, if you guys want to ball out a little bit, somebody sends in a 50 with shotgun a beer, and then I poured up a boot just in case anybody's trying to get wild. Maybe I'll cut a deal later on in the show, but we might go $500 for a boot. And then I said this. I'm working out today after the show. I'm going to go on a run uh, trying to stay in shape during free agency here. So I said every Super Chat that comes in, if somebody sends in $21 Super Chats, I'll go on a $20 or a 20-minute run. So every super chat that comes in today is a one-minute run. And guys, if you guys want to keep us live this entire uh, the entire day, this is the best way to do so. Support the show. Um, I would really appreciate it, man. And we could definitely, you know, get after it today and have some fun just waiting on, you know, more news and just kind of hanging out, chopping it up uh, around the Minnesota Vikings as we already did get our first super chat of the day. And it's coming in from no other. Then Roger Bong, he said, I'll start it off. 
Everybody give me a Skull Roger down below in the chat. If you guys are new here, if you guys don't know what we do on our watch parties during the season, somebody sends in a super chat, show them love down below. Type Skull Roger in the chat as Roger Bonk is Ariana Shotsky's Hall of Fame. As we are getting some breaking news here on the channel within the NFC North division, the Chicago Bears are signing a tight end. They're signing Gerald Everett. Cameron Thompson saying, I'm new here. What's up, Cam? How you doing? Shout out to Mini Jets saying, Skull Roger. Tim saying, Roger, I'll hit that bong. That's hilarious, Tim. Shout out to you. Uh, Winding Pie saying, Skull Roger. And Jace saying, Skull Roger as well. Roger, as always, man, we really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for always supporting the show. If you guys want to get involved, best way to keep us alive, we can have some drinks here on the show. And, uh, yeah, and uh, we can have some fun here. But... Mini Jets saying, I told you we would get Aaron Jones. Yeah, Aaron Jones was, I don't want to say an obvious option for the Minnesota Vikings, but like Aaron Jones was, you know, when the Packers signed Josh Jacobs, like I immediately thought of the Vikings as an option for Aaron Jones if you were to be cut. He got cut. Aaron Jones says, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go stick it to Green Bay. I'm going to come to Minnesota and I'm going to try to make some noise over there. So, I just love the move, like really Aaron Jones. I think he's still one of the more underrated running backs in the National Football League. And Vikings fans, I mean, we should be familiar with him. He absolutely killed us. So Jace is saying, how much cap room do we have? Do you know? I'll look that up in a second. I've been getting different numbers on different websites. But while I'm doing that, let me know. Not do you want the Vikings to draft a quarterback. Will the Vikings draft a quarterback? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section is let me look up exactly how much Vikings cap space they have. If I'm not mistaken. Because it's kind of tough to add up the number. Because you also get the 828.5 uh, dead cap hit on Cousins, you get the $14.9 million dead cap hit on Daniel Hunter, and you get the 16.8 dead cap hit on Marcus Davenport. So the trio is assuming $50 million in dead money. So the Vikings, and in terms of next season, are supposed to have $140 million in cap space. Yeah, it's tough to get a number how much they have left right now. Uh, but the Vikings still have a little bit of money to spend. You also got to imagine that the Vikings will be um, spending a lot of money, obviously, with the uh, NFL draft. So they're going to be going there but because uh, you obviously got to pay your draft picks and they're going to take up some of the cap. But you guys are saying, Aaron saying, Skull Roger. Shout out to you showing love to Roger Bong. Tim saying, yes, 33 into his house. Yes, Tim. Aaron Jones. I, I just can't wait to watch him play the Packers, man. It's going to be a ton of fun. Hugh Yang saying, I'm pumped. Erica Point saying, Skull Roger. Tim saying, 14 mil. Tim, it, I, it should be around 14 mil. That doesn't make sense. Again, like all these websites, like you don't really know like how much like each of these guys, like what their cap hit is going to be for next season. But with the Vikings signing a lot of uh, one-year deals, I have been getting around either 10 to 20 mil. So 14 does sound right. NFL teams are just signing their ops. Yeah, for real. Like, uh, if you guys didn't know, I'll show you guys this. Patrick Queen did go to the Pittsburgh Steelers in kind of a shocking move. He ended up getting paid uh, actually not as much as I thought. Yeah, Patrick Queen left Baltimore and he went to Pittsburgh on a three-year $41 million deal. I always wanted Patrick Queen on the Vikings. I think he was a dog. We were talking about him last offseason when the Vikings were potentially trading for him. Um, but yeah, Patrick Queen's a dog. He went to Pittsburgh. Skull Production saying apparently Hunter wants 30 mil a year. Yeah, Hunter is going to get paid, and rightfully so, man. Yeah, and then also, Tim, we got this big time news as well. Check this out, everybody. King Henry. I wanted Derrick Henry really bad, but King Henry has agreed the terms to sign with the Baltimore Ravens on a two year. $16 million deal. As Cameron saying, do the Vikings need a third receiver? Um, They definitely do, but also I wouldn't hate running back with Brandon Powell. Like, I think the Vikings are so 
I don't want to say just stacked at weapons that like a wide receiver doesn't a wide receiver three necessarily doesn't matter, but I think Brandon Powell honestly fits in very well. A guy on third downs can beat his man and man cover or beat his man when the running man coverage just create a little separation. Like I think Brandon Powell would be a good option. I don't expect KJ Osborne to be back, and I think that's the right call. KJ was uh not it's not like he was bad last season. He just wasn't the same guy. He didn't take that next step that I assumed he would. Eric saying, Mr. Pat, are you happy the Vikings didn't pick up Russell Wilson's skull skull? Um, yes and no, because Russ was an intriguing, you know, QB1 option for the Vikes, obviously just because he's, you know, going to make $1.2 million this next season. But I do like what they got with Sam Darnold. I honestly, you know, this may sound crazy, you guys, but Sam Darnold's got more upside than Russell Wilson. So I, I, I think Russell Wilson's cooked. I think he's a problem in the locker room. I'm honestly happy that they went a different direction instead of, you know, obviously going with Russell Wilson. But this is some deep kind of diving analytics and some deep stats on Sam Darnold. So get to know him a little bit better. So this is him from last season. He didn't really play too, too much for the San Francisco 49ers. He only threw the ball 65 times. But these were his stats. So his turnover-worthy play percentage, and I'll actually pull this up for his entire um, career as well. But this was in 2023 with the San Francisco 49ers. His turnover-worthy play percentage. So every single play, Sam Darnold had the ball in his hands as Chase Young is visiting with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, every play that Sam Darnold has or had in his hands, he uh, – it was a turnover-worthy play 3.4% of the time. I'm trying to see what it is on his career. He's got 4.1 turnover-worthy play percentage on his entire year. Big-time throw percentage, like a big-time throw. PFF kind of calls it as like, oh, you see a big-time throw, you know a big-time throw. 2% of his throws were big-time throws this past season, which does make sense in that, uh, in that San Francisco 49ers offense. Um, on his career, it's actually higher than that. It's 3.7. But his average depth of target, his A dot for Darnold is at 8.7 this last past season. And overall in his career is 8.7 as well. But this is a stat I love the most. So it's adjusted completion percentage. And PFF does a great job that, you know, obviously completion percentage in the NFL, like it's a two-way street. It's not just the quarterback that makes the plays. It's also wide receiver. They got to catch the ball. They got to secure it. And obviously that does affect completion percentage, but his adjusted one this past season, which incorporates that, was at 69.8. Overall on Dar Darnold's career, it was 72.5. So I actually do think, even though Sam Darnold does turn the ball over maybe more than obviously you would like, I think he is a fairly accurate quarterback. He's got a big time arm. You know, I was diving into a lot of his tape last night and you know, if he can just kind of clean up the turnovers, man, like I really do believe he's got some big time potential because what I was just saying, his adjusted completion percentage on his career is 72.5. Well, his overall completion percentage is 59.7. So could you call that some bad luck? Could you call that, you know, maybe his receivers letting him down a little bit in New York? Yeah, hundred percent. But you know, no doubt that Sam Darnold's got the big time arm talent. I mean, there was a reason he was selected third overall for not being the most, you know, athletic dual threat type of quarterback, he was still uh, able to find himself top five in the draft. So, listen, I like Sam Darnold. I think he's going to actually work out pretty, pretty well here. Is he going to be, you know, is he going to be a absolute home run for Minnesota? Probably not. Um, but could he be a guy that really does? you know, step in and can be a solid bridge quarterback for the Vikings, 110%. But I want to get you guys involved again and get you guys a thought. Grade the signing of Sam Darnold for me down in the comments section. I'm going to give it a B. I'm not going to give it an A. I'm just going to give it a solid B because I think this was, you know, one of the better options you could have went with. I would have liked Sam Darnold over, you know, Minshew. I wanted Tyrod, but I would have rather had Sam Darnold. I would have honestly rather have had Darnold than Justin Fields. Like, if you would have had to give up a second or third round pick for Fields, I probably would have been out on that. But Sam Darnold for $10 million a year, I'll take it. As Tim's giving it a B plus, Rogers riding with my choice, giving it a B. And then Eric Mott giving it a C plus down in the chat. Yeah, I think I'm going to give the Sam Darnold signing 
a solid B, and it has the chance to go to an A. But let's just say Sam Darnold. How about this? Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Sam Darnold steps in first month of the year. Vikings go 0-4, and Sam Darnold throws two picks for – or throws 10 interceptions and throws for two touchdowns, right? Worst case scenario. Who necessarily cares? Like, it's a $10 million deal. You can move off him next season. You're probably going to draft a quarterback. Like, then you could just put the rookie in. I think it's kind of a high-risk lo – or low-risk, high-reward type of move from Minnesota. Aaron's giving it a B. Eric saying a strong, a strong C plus. Need to see him play first, 100%. Eric, and that's uh, you know obviously fair. Um, Hugh Yang saying now just add corners and safety. I think we're good with safety. You obviously got seen Bynum, Harrison Smith still there, and Metellus. I don't necessarily think the Vikings are gonna be looking at the safety group, but corner definitely. I think corner honestly at number 11. If the Vikings don't want to go quarterback, could definitely be a choice. Bart saying it's starting to feel like the first official year of Cam and KOC. Yeah, that's a great point. This is the Cam and KOC era moving forward. It kind of still felt like even last year and the last two years still was kind of that same group of Vikings guys. It was still like Daniel Hunter, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson still had that core. Well, now they're all gone. Now it's a camp, KOC, and Jefferson era here in Minnesota. School production saying maybe a guard too. Yeah, Vikings definitely need to get guard. Interior defensive lineman up there as a need as well. Mini Jets saying, uh, I want to get Eric Kendricks and pair him up with Ivan Pace. The young guy in a vet. Well, the Vikings got Blake Cashman, who I think is a great signing for Minnesota. Um, you know, Cashman is obviously, you know, not a a unreal, like, Patrick Queen level linebacker. But Cashman was very, very good for the Houston Texans last season. And I really do think he is going to work out for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, put him next to Ivan Pace. Trying to find his details right here. Yeah, three-year, 25 and a half million dollar deal I think he's gonna be great so I don't really think the Vikings are gonna look at linebacker anymore but we did get a super chat from my man Eric Mott Eric you are getting a raffle ticket to win our Vikings nightstand kind of trophy looking thing as he says I believe I believe too this is uh if you guys remember like the Philadelphia 76ers they had to trust the process like this is what I'm necessarily doing with Quazy right now I'm trusting the process I'm hoping it's going to work out, and I like the steps he's making. You got younger. You got more athletic on the defensive side of the football. Um, yeah, overall, Eric, I love it. Eric, I love it. So, Roger saying skull, Eric, in the chat. Eric is saying skull, Mr. Eric Mott, in the chat. Shout out to you guys. If anybody sends in a super chat today, make sure you guys do show them love in the chat. Get this family atmosphere going here on the channel. But this is our super chat menu. If you guys want to do get involved. Uh, Roger and Eric got themselves one ticket into our March raffle where we will be giving away. Let me show you guys this. This is a uh, picture. Honestly, doesn't do it justice. Um, it's this kind of massive bedside trophy thing. And you can actually like spin this helmet around. It's literally floating right there. I think it'd be pretty cool. You know, you have somebody over, you know, to your room and they see that, you know, sitting bedside. I think they'll definitely, uh, you know, they'll definitely think it's pretty cool, man. They'll think you're a pretty cool Vikings fan because I might throw five dollars and try to get this because the bosses here said I couldn't get him, uh, couldn't get one myself. But maybe if I get five dollars, I'll be able to get in there. But also ten dollars super chat. Um, we do have the Shotsky Hall of Fame. We got a ton of real ones already on there. But if you guys send in a ten dollars super chat, or if you guys want to send in a ten to get somebody else on the board, you know, a bunch of guys already do that. But how sweet is this thing? It says skull. We'll put your name around it. We'll sign your name on here. And maybe we give this away before the start of the regular season. But I love this thing. Um, this thing is freaking awesome. Shout out to Allie Barefoot for making it. But $10 gets you on here. And if you guys want to ball out, have a little party here on the channel. I'll shotgun a beer old-fashioned style. Um, and we could have some fun. And if we do some, I'll get the 500. We'll do a boot. But, hey, also deal of the day. I said every super chat we get is one mile on my run after work. And right now we are at two super chats. So I'm going on a two-mile run when I get back. Hopefully you guys, uh, eh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get up to like 10 minutes on my mile run. But if you guys can, I would really appreciate it. Support the channel. Bosses didn't really want me going live today, but I said Vikings fans deserve this after the Darnold and Aaron Jones news. So if you guys want to help me out, uh, please do so. And uh, send in a super chat. We could definitely, uh, you know, have some fun. But let me ask you guys this question. 
We'll go this, actually. I want to get you guys involved, get to know you guys a little bit better. Who is your favorite NFL player? And I'm going to throw a curveball. You can't say a Minnesota Viking. Mr. Beam saying, I saw him in Carolina. He is not good. Yeah, if you're talking about Darnold, I mean, you guys think about what was around him in Carolina, though. You know, they didn't have Justin Jefferson. They didn't have uh, Jordan Addison, Hawkinson, two great tackles, and a young coach. Like, they didn't have that. Roger, you're all good, bro. Appreciate everything you do for me. You know, no worries at all. You, Roger, you don't need to do anything anymore. Don't you worry about it. Connor saying Patrick Mahomes. Mini Jets saying Adam Thielen. Kind of a cop-out answer, Mini Jets. Cameron Thompson saying Christian McCaffrey. I like that call as well. Bart saying the A-minus drops quickly. F we drop back in the draft. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying, Bart. Like, it obviously depends on what the Vikings do in the draft. Yeah, and definitely, like, Darnold's definitely not, like, blame-free, you know, with how he started his NFL career. But it's not like he was dealt, like, a solid hand. Like, if you're playing poker, like, Darnold was kind of dealt like 7-10 off suit. Like, it's an okay hand, but are you really doing, you know, much with that? Probably, probably not. Nevada Mavericks saying Josh Allen. Yeah, if I had to pick one quarterback to put on the Vikings, it would be Josh Allen. See, also, I wonder if the Vikings, like, I wonder if they're looking around the league right now and they're saying, like, you know, what if, like, the Buffalo Bills? And I'm going to throw some wild at you guys. Obviously, Josh Allen wants to be in Buffalo. I'm not saying he would ever leave. But, like, let's just say, like, Buffalo doesn't support him well enough. And he's like, I can't win here. I got to go to a new place. I'm going to go team up with Justin Jefferson. Like, that's where the Vikings have kind of set themselves up right now. It's like you can have so many options at that quarterback position. There's a play, 75, got pushed down to the quarterback. Connor, what's going on, man? Hey, just got here. What are your thoughts on Aaron Jones signing in our running back room? I absolutely love the signing of Aaron Jones. I was showing these numbers on the screen earlier, um, Connor, and this is rushing yards over expected. So if you guys don't know, it's like you will see a – or after the game, like a bunch of these analytical guys, they'll say like, all right, on this rush, this running back was supposed to get this many yards. So they take rushing yards over the expected – and since week 16 to the divisional, which is really playoff football, when you want to have a good run game, you want to rely on it just a little bit more. Aaron Jones is number one in the NFL by a wide margin at plus 151 rushing yards over expected. Josh Allen at plus 97. And then James Conner at plus 86 as well. Uh, but overall, Aaron Jones, I think it's a great move. I think you're going to be able to really finally have a running game here in Minnesota because... Also, I want to show you guys this. The Vikings rushing attack over the last two seasons under Kevin O'Connell, which I never thought would be the case, but it was terrible. I mean, 2022, rushing yards per game. Vikings averaged 97.7. That was 90, or that was 27th in the league. Then this past season, they averaged 91.4, which was 29th in the NFL. I think this is definitely a position of need for Minnesota. And um, I think, like, also, I think people chalk up, like, a bad running game to an offensive line. I actually think the Vikings poor running game was due to the running back play because I remember there was a stat that came out last season where it was like, oh, the Vikings have the number one run blocking offensive line, but they were like 30th in the league in rushing. And that was a lot because, you know, Vikings didn't really throw the, or run the ball too much at the earlier half of last season. But, um, like, I definitely do think this is the right move for Minnesota. You know, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Who signed Madison, if anyone? Nobody has signed Alexander Madison as it stands right now. Nobody has signed Madison. So is Jones signing kind of the mentor Chandler? Is just a one-year push to support a rookie quarterback? Yeah, I think it's more of a Aaron Jones is kind of just supporting the rookie or Sam Darnold, whoever ends up getting the, you know, the full-time start there. But I, I, I just think also the Vikings were like, let's just get more good football players in here. Like Aaron Jones? He's a hell of a football player. Like, automatically, he's probably already a top 10 player on the Vikings. You know, you still got Jefferson, Addison, Hawk, like, Darisaw, O'Neal. I mean, Jonathan Grenard. Like, you got to think he's up there now, too. But, I mean, man, I mean, Aaron Jones is no doubt. Like, he is no doubt a uh, top 10 player. As we are getting reports right now. Some Daniil Hunter news. Daniil Hunter news right here. The Vikings 
defensive end has a mutual interest with? Guess the team. Guess what team down below has interest in Daniil Hunter, and I'll give you guys a shout-out. Guess what team has interest in Daniil Hunter, and I'll give you guys a shout-out. Wait for it to come in. Wait for it to come in. Chiefs, Jags, haven't seen it yet. Haven't seen it yet. We got breaking news here. Dallas, no. The Lions, no. They were a playoff team in the AFC. A playoff team in the AFC. I'll tell you what. First person I see that gets it right, I'll give you guys a free addition to the Shotsky Hall of Fame. As we got it from GZWXP, the Houston Texans have interest in signing Daniil Hunter, and apparently he has interest there as well. Uh, GSWXP, welcome to the board, my friend. We'll get you a free entry for being active in the chat. Shout out to you. Whoops, my laptop just saw G. Got the worst marker in the entire studio right now. But, yeah, the Houston Texans are interested in um, Daniil Hunter, which makes sense, man. A little tight end, or a little defensive end swap. That marker is terrible. Hold on, everybody. I got to get him another one from my man, GS. He got it right here. About a little this action. Want to go a little different color here, GS. Shout out to you. Houston Texans interested in Daniil Hunter. GSWXP, welcome on the board. See you at the bottom right there in the red. Terrible handwriting by me. I'll go go over that. Um, um, I'll go over that when we get off the show. But we did have a $50 Super Chat roll in there when we were breaking it down over Daniel Hunter getting interest from the Houston Texans. From my man, Skolger. Skolger, how you doing? Was tuning in all year. I got you on Twitter. Great Vikings mind. Chop it up with him all the time. Huge supporter of the show. Sending a $50 Super Chat. Shout out to Skolger. Let's freaking go. I'm going to go shotgun a beer for you. Or actually, I'll just sip on the beer, man. I'm going to sip on the beer right now. Let the audience still build up. We might have a long day here on the channel. But shout out to Skolger. Everybody type a Skull Skolger down in the chat. Sending a $50 super chat here. As Eric is saying, Skull Mr. Rocky in the chat. Shout out to you, Eric, my friend. Well, it was forty nine ninety nine. Hey, maybe I'd do it. Maybe I'd do it. Do I go shot fun for this? Screw it. Let's do it. I'm with you. Like the Jones signing. Yeah, I like the Jones signing a lot too, man. The Jones signing was great. Um, and plus, like, guys, could you imagine this? Like, let's just say Vikings Packers. Let's just say somehow Lions aren't the same team as they were last season. Let's just say the Bears are still the damn Chicago Bears. What if it's Aaron Jones versus former team week 18 a shot at the alley barefoot. Alley, Alley, come up on here real quick. Alley actually made this. Shout out to Alley. This thing is freaking sweet. This was the creator of it. Everybody type a skull Alley down below. She made this. It was freaking awesome. So shout out to her. Show Alley some love in the chat. Shout out to Skolger, though. Send in a $50 super chat. We really do appreciate it. As living the dream of Dan saying skull Skolger. Mini Jet saying skull Alley. Roger Bong saying skull Alley. Shout out to her for making it. Eric Mott saying Skull Alley. Yeah, super nice of her. Showing, showing Vikings Nation some love. So, hey, you know what? I'll cut a deal right now. I'll cut a deal right now since uh, we just got a 50. I'll go $5 Super Chat. $5 Super Chats. You get on the Shotsky Hall of Fame. Normally, it's $10. I'll cut a deal right now. So, you'll get a raffle ticket and we'll put your name on there. But shout out to Alley Barefoot. Hooking it up. Bringing in Happy Dads in the studio. Brought me a wild cherry one. Shout out to her. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Thoughts on Derrick Henry going to the Ravens? Uh, yeah, that's that's scary. Um, that is like the perfect combination of like a quarterback running back duo is like Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. You got the kind of you got kind of the game breaker and the just the ultra athleticism in a guy like Lamar Jackson, and then you got like the ground and pound game. Like it's the perfect yin and yang matchup, man. Like I really do think that was a great move by them. Um, 
Ravens did lose Patrick Queen. Also, when we're kind of going through this whole thing, I'll be putting other free agent moves up there and down there. Just kind of keep you guys posted with what's going on in the NFL. And you guys can just kind of hang out, sit back, relax. We can just hang out. As also, I do want to make this note. Um, I, I actually I wanted to start off today's show with this. How about this move from the Kansas City Chiefs? Irv Smith Jr. heading to Kansas City. I promise you right now, I was a big fan of Irv Smith when he was coming out when he was coming out of college. Um, and when he was with the Vikings, obviously dealt with injuries and all that. But I promise you, Irv Smith will have an unreal year for the Kansas City Chiefs this next season. Oh, man. That one bothered me. That one bothered me, no doubt. Because I know I'm going to be mad because it's going to be like, you know, Irv Smith's got all types of talent, and Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and the whole crew over there is going to get the most out of him. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to shotgun this beer right here. Let me actually get you guys the contract details of Derrick Henry heading to the Baltimore Ravens, which, man, oh, man, dangerous for the rest of the NFL. Dangerous for the rest of the NFL. Right there. Derrick Henry signed a two-year, $16 million deal. What happens with Harrison Smith? I think he's going to get cut or restructure or retire. I think those are three options. Vikings are going to be so unpredictable. They are good. Hey, hey, they are a really unpredictable team. I don't know what's going to happen. Eric Mott saying, got to thank you for all you do. Eric, I really do appreciate it, man. Trying to keep you guys posted with the latest around the Vikings. People are talking about Jefferson to the Bengals. Tell me that's a joke. Joseph. That's a joke. If Justin Jeff, I'll say this. If Justin Jefferson goes to the Bengals, it better be for three first-round picks at least. I am not letting the Bengals recreate that 2019 LSU team and possibly create one of the best offenses in NFL history because it was the best offense in college football history, no doubt, with Burrow, Justin Jefferson, Chase, um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in the backfield who was a dog in college. Oh, Jefferson to the Packers? Hey, I'll tell you this, guys. If the Vikings trade Justin Jefferson to the Packers, I'm deleting the channel. I'm deleting the channel. Lewisine was a bust? I, I'm not willing to call Scene a bust just yet. I'm not giving up on Lewisine. He had a compound leg fracture his rookie year. He got kind of buried in the depth chart last season with Metellus and Bynum and Smith all playing well. I'm not, I'm not willing to give up on Lewis Seen just yet. Eric saying Irv Smith looked good but didn't prevail, but good luck to Irv. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Um, obviously, Irv was not, like, incredible, incredible in Minnesota. Um, you know, dealt with injuries. He had drop issues his first couple of years. But when he was on, man, Irv Smith was a hell of a uh, tight end. And I'll tell you what, he's going to be great for Kansas City. The Lions fleeced us on that trade. Are you – what trade are you talking – oh, the scene trade. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they did. They did. But we did get TJ Hawkinson with one of those draft picks, which was a good move. But <clears throat> I would – if I had to redo that trade, I would have redone it. Dalton, T, saying, Skull, my favorite YouTuber. Everybody show Dalton some love in the chat. Appreciate you. Sam Darnold does bad. What do you think about Hall starting? I the Vikings got to draft a quarterback. Like I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, you know, Sam Darnold, you know, is bad for the first two months, and we like hit the panic button. We're like, oh, we're going back to Nick Mullins or, you know, Jaron Hall. Like I don't want that to be the situation. Um, I would rather go get like a guy like JJ McCarthy, who Cameron Thompson is saying. But I got the Happy Dad loaded up in the funnel. Every fifty we get today, I will be knocking down a shotgun. You load it up. If you guys don't know, these are sweet. Then you kind of cock it a little bit, and then it goes down the um, hatch. As Aaron saying, I'm a Packers fan, but I appreciate your content. Uh, shout out to you. Shout out to you. As Isaiah Flores coming in saying, what's happening with Hunter? We did get some breaking news here on the channel, and I'll keep you guys posted all throughout the day on the latest breaking news around Minnesota, is that the Houston Texans and Daniel Hunter have mutual interest in each other. Right now, Daniel Hunter, I'm watching NFL Network on in the background. They have him as the number one, number one free agent left here um, in free agency. Oh, Roger, I will formally write you an apology, Roger Bong, um, if Daniel Hunter does go to the Houston Texans. <coughs> What's going on with Brian Flores? Uh, Brian Flores is completely dominating free agency for Minnesota. 
Keep it up, man. You are doing good. Hey, appreciate it, Dalton. No, Roger, it is not all good. It is not all good. Even though that, you know, hey, Roger, maybe you're a vintage guy. You like wearing the throwback stuff. The Neil Hunter jersey in like five years, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Joseph saying, is there any way the Patriots trade the third overall pick now that they traded Mac? I'm going to go no, but I did get a report today that if Drake May falls, anticipate the Vikings to be heavy contenders to trade up the number three. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Watch out for the Vikings. I'll say this. I just got chills right now because I think I just got, I think I kind of got an insight on what the Vikings are going to do. So it was a report right, uh, from a Patriots beat reporter. He did say, watch out for the Vikings as being an option to trade up to the third overall pick if Drake May falls. If I had to choose it right now, the Vikings will walk away in the draft with either Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. I want you guys to actually let me know. Type J.J. if you guys would rather have McCarthy or type D.M. if you guys would rather have Drake May. Keep in mind, you probably have to trade up a couple more spots to get Drake May. But you guys let me know down below. I'm going to knock down this shotgun right here. Shout out to Skolger, $50 super chat. Cheers to all of you guys. Woo! Man, oh man. Man, oh man. Oh, that was ice cold. As we got breaking news here on the channel. Breaking news. I want you guys to guess. We just had an edge rusher sign to a team. It is not Daniel Hunter. It is Dante Fowler Jr., edge rusher going to the Washington Commanders. As I'm seeing a lot of JJs flowing in the chat. Um, JJ or Drake May is interesting because I think they're two different types of prospects. Like, I think Drake May is like more of the Justin Herbert, like, big arm, like that Josh Allen type of guy. Where then I think J.J. McCarthy, and I'm not comparing him to Joe Burrow, but I think he's more of that type of QB. Um, where Drake May is kind of like that big arm, like, you know, if you get, like, I'll tell you what, Drake May's ceiling is way higher than McCarthy's, but I think McCarthy's floor is significantly higher than Drake May. The one thing I don't like about Drake May, and you guys can go back and watch his tape, actually two things I don't like. And that's why I think he could fall in the draft because I think these guys will start looking at it. Drake May, when he's throwing the football, he, he has an unreal arm. There's no doubt about it. But he kind of has a windup. And, you know, obviously in the NFL, it's quicker throws. You got to be more active. Or not more active. You got to be just, you know, quicker in the league. Drake May has this sort of windup. And McCarthy's just got this zip. Like, I can just see it now. Like, May's winding up for a throw, strip sack in the backfield. Like, that's my concern. And then also, his pocket presence isn't too good. Like, he doesn't move around in the pocket too, too well. So that's definitely a concern. Also, shout out to you guys. We've got over 100 people watching. That's pretty freaking cool, man. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to be hanging out here for the foreseeable future, chopping it up, talking about the Minnesota Vikings. I got some drinks in the studio. If you guys are drinking home with me, um, no, crack one open, man. We can have some fun here. It's free agency, guys. This comes around once a year. Let's have some fun. You guys just saw my shirt lift up there from the fan in the studio. Drinking out of this thing is insane. Harvey Buxton in the chat saying, let's go get our guy, JJ. Harvey, I am happy you are on the JJ McCarthy hype train right now. Um, listen, I think JJ is going to work out in the league, man. I really do. And I think if he would come to Minnesota, like my dream scenario right now is the Vikings. So I said this. Actually, I'll, here. I'm going to go put something in the chat right now because I kind of have called the vast uh, two moves for Minnesota. So I tweeted out last night. I said the next four moves the Vikings need to make. I said the next four moves the Vikings need to make was one, sign Sam Darnold. They did that. Number two, I said, sign Aaron Jones. They did that. Number three was trade up for a quarterback. And number four was extend Justin Jefferson. Right now we're two of four. But I am putting my Twitter in the chat. Um, if you guys could give me a follow over there. Trying to up my Twitter game. Just crossed over 300 followers on Twitter. No big deal. I just got this Twitter. So uh, trying to up my game a little bit. 
kind of get more in, you know, the Vikings media. And, uh, you know, if you guys could help me out, man, it would be pretty freaking cool. Uh, I'm going to be working my ass off for this channel and, uh, you know, on all media websites. Wherever you guys got me, I love chopping it up in the DMs with you guys. Like, Skolger, we chop it up. Roger Bong, Harvey Buxton. Like, you know, I will try to do my best to, you know, stay up to date on the latest round of Vikes. And, you know, obviously keep you guys posted. Obviously keep you guys posted. But if you guys do want to give me a follow over there, link is in the chat. I will give you guys a follow back. And, hey, shoot me a DM. We could chop it up around the, about the Vikings all off season long as well as Isaiah saying what about Daniels I think Daniels so I'll actually show you guys this um this was other news that broke earlier today um Marcus Mariota went to the Washington Commanders on a one-year six million dollar deal um I think this almost guarantees they are taking Jaden Daniels I think I think this guarantees they're taking Jaden Daniels um, because I think when you want a bridge quarterback, you want guys that are similar, right? Like, you don't want to completely change your offense. Like, oh, you got Jaden Daniels in the game. Mariota's in. We got to run a completely different unit. Take, for example, thoughts, thoughts are going on up here right now. Vikings last season. They went from Kirk Cousins to Josh Dobbs. What drove me crazy about um, Kevin O'Connell last year is he didn't change the offense when Josh Dobbs got in there. He didn't go to any read options. He didn't go to any quarterback design runs. So I think this is a big indicator that they're going to take Jaden Daniels, and I think Drake May is going to be there at three if the Vikings want to trade up for him. But maybe it's a guy like Michael Penix. Maybe the Vikings stay put at 11, and they get Michael Penix. Um, but we'll see. But if you guys haven't already, please, if you guys could, hit that subscribe button. Um, as we do have breaking news here on the channel, more breaking news. We have a new quarterback on the market. Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to be cut by the Las Vegas Raiders tomorrow. Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to be cut by the Raiders tomorrow. Doesn't really affect the Vikings since they already got their guy. Um, yeah. DeMargio saying already sub. Shout out to you. Yeah, if you guys are new here and hit that sub button, you guys will see that number go up. In live time. In live time. We're going to continue breaking it down here on the channel. Uh, all free agency. We will be right here live breaking it down. And you know what? I got a, I got an extra happy dad in the studio. I kind of want to crack it open. Next super chat that comes in. It could be a dollar. I'm going to write your name on the can. Dedicate this beer to you. You know, if you guys want to support the show. But, hey, I also said it. $5 super chats now. We're cutting the deals. Shotsky Hall of Fame. We're going to write your name on there. $5 super chat if you guys want to get involved. And then if we can somehow get the $500 total, I'll knock down a boot today. And we've gotten three super chats total today. I'm going to go on a three-minute run. I'd like to maybe make it at least a 10-minute run, get a good workout in. But if you guys want to support the show, I would really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, yeah. If you guys uh, want to kind of help support the show and, um, you know, have a little fun here. Have a little fun. We could definitely do so. But as Roger Bong, Roger, Roger, you're going to get me in shape, man. You're going to get me in shape. He's coming in with a $1 super chat. Roger, you're good, by the way. No, nothing more from Roger. I don't want anything more from Roger. But, Roger, we do appreciate it, as always, my friend. I'm writing your name on the beer. We're cracking open the Happy Dad. This is freaking pineapple. What a brutal choice that was. I got to get a new marker in here, Roger. I got to get a new marker in here. But everybody shout at the Roger Bong. Show him some love in the chat. This thing is still soaking wet from the cold right now, Raj. Hold on. Nobody this worked out in the season. We were doing this for our watch parties during the year. Not when the beers are still soaking. You know what, Roger? We'll get to that in a second. But a shout out to you, Roger. Shout out to you, man. Skull Nation in the chat. What up, what up, what up? As Harvey Buxton coming in saying, I want in on that raffle. Harvey, I uh, did hand our shipping department that skull we had today. So they're going to send it out to you shortly, and you will be getting that. Harvey sending a $200 super chat yesterday. It was freaking awesome. Harvey's been holding it down, man, this entire season. Um, Freaking beast. I love Harvey. But, hey. I'll crack this open to my man Harvey, and I'll crack it open to my man Roger Bong. 
Shout out to you guys. $67 in Super Chats. If we could get to $100, that would be pretty freaking cool, man. Because, hey, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm trying to stay live here on the channel until I uh, don't need to work no more. So, cheers to you guys. Cheers to Harvey. Cheers to Eric. Let's go. Also, God, pineapple is terrible. As, oh, Rocky coming in with a $10 super chat. Shout out to Rocky, the cutest puppy in the entire, um, no, not country, entire world. Shout out to Rocky. Everybody give me a skull Rocky down below in the chat. Cheers to you. Appreciate the support as always. Um, that is my dad, actually. So shout out to him watching the show right now. He might actually might be on a walk with that dog. That exact dog you see right there may be on a walk um, there. As oh on four four L coming in with a super chat. We appreciate it. You guys are showing too much love right now, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keeping me live here. I appreciate y'all, man. Um, I'm trying to hang out with you guys all day. Just being transparent. If you guys send in super chats, I'll be live here all day waiting on the news. We could get a notification on my phone at any time. But get the skull one for alls down below. He said skull after the Davenport move. If Ivan Pace does not get Agent Zero, we riot. Uh, yeah. Thank you for saying that. First off, that's a great point. To get you guys the contract details on Marcus Davenport right now. If you guys did not know, right up here, Marcus Davenport is signing with the Detroit Lions with a one-year up to ten and a half million dollar deal. Insane. First off, it's like six. I think it's six million guaranteed. Um, like. Like, Davenport was, like, he was great that one game against the Panthers, if you guys do remember, but, like, Davenport's getting that much. I get it's a one-year prove-it deal, but, man, I'm happy he's off the team, but one for all, I agree. Like, if Ivan Pace is not rocking number zero next season for Minnesota, we riot. I wonder if he's already considering it. Um, I bet you he is. I bet you he is. As Harvey is saying, how do you get your free agency news? Uh, just Twitter. Mainly, and we got somebody uh, behind the scenes here updating these graphics um, all over. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's mainly how we get them. What about Hicks? Uh, Jordan Hicks actually signed with the Cleveland Browns yesterday. So, a little key note here. Jordan Hicks did sign with the Cleveland Browns. Um, as Cameron saying, Skull Rocky. What up, Cameron? Skull Vikings and the everyone. Cameron, thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, that was some more news around the Vikings. Jordan Hicks did go to the Cleveland Browns here. Yeah, Eric, good point. You know, Davenport is aging, so it's all good. Like, I wasn't really tripping over losing Marcus Davenport um, at all. Uh, I think it was the right move. I think it was the right move. You know, obviously, I do think he still has, the, you know, potential in this league, but... Oh, we got a first-time super chatter here on the show. Matt coming in, getting his thoughts up on the screen. And also, guys, if this is your first time super chatting, we got a sweet super chat sticker we could show you guys some love. But I need everybody to welcome Matt into the Vikings Now family. Joining the squad, he's sending a $5.20 super chat. Show him some love down in the chat. Type the skull match. Shout out to DiMargio. Shout out to Eric. Shout out to Rocky, Harvey, and Skull Nation. I'll show him Matt some love. But he's saying, Skull Viking World Order. We need to re-sign Reisner and sign Josie Jewell. Um, I'm 100% in on Dalton Reisner coming back. I think he would be a great option to start at left guard next season. I thought he, if I had to grade Dalton Reisner's year last season, I would probably give it a solid B-. minus. I think he was good, but... In terms of how much he was pay he was getting paid last year, that four million dollars, I'd probably go Davin or Reisner at maybe probably an A. Like honestly, I think he lived up to that contract. I would bring him back, no doubt. Uh, Matt, really do appreciate you showing some love here on the show. In terms of Josie Jewell, I think we're good at that spot. Like I think the linebacker position is good. As Rune, no way, Rune, you're catching a live show mid year. Shout out to you, Rune. What up, baby? How you doing? He's saying skull, Matt. Rune. You miss the watch parties during the season. You miss the watch parties during the year because I do too, man. I do for sure. As Richard is saying, Marcus Davenport is dead wood. Yeah. 
I'm fine with losing him. I didn't think that was a big deal at all. I didn't think that was a big deal at all. But appreciate you guys getting uh, some super chats in there, keeping us live as Machines Within, sending in a $5 super chat, third super chat ever. Everybody show Skull Machine some love. We already got Rocky in there. Uh, Rogers showing some love. DeMargio, shout out to you. Harvey, of course, always showing love. As Bart is saying, Hunter would be a perfect fit for the Texans. Yeah, we are getting reports. Um, that the Texans and Hunter are possibly closing in on a deal. So, you know, yeah, I Hunter's gone. I think I can almost guarantee that. No, I can't guarantee it. Hunter won't be re-signing with the Minnesota Vikings. But, you know, I think Houston makes a whole lot of sense for him, Goes pairs up with D'Amico Ryans. You know, what D'Amico did with that Niners D-line, really developing a lot of those guys, um, I think would make a lot of sense for Hunter. As Bed, Bedge Burt saying, I don't think losing Hunter is a big deal after the pickups from yesterday. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, obviously, like, I like the Jonathan Grenard signing. I think that was a really, really solid move for Minnesota. You got Van Ginkle, who actually Van Ginkle is one of the highest rated edge rushers from last season uh, for the Minnesota Vikings. I just think it was a good move. I think the Vikings kind of, uh, I think the Vikings just needed to do it. I think it was time to move on from the Kirk Cousins, the Neil Hunter, you know, that Mike Zimmer era. So we need cornerbacks at true CB. And that's what Joshua Williams saying. Any updates on the Vikes? We got no real, real updates on the Vikings right now, but we have gotten reports that they are going to be active in the defensive tackle market now, whether it's a draft or free agency. So expect them to get, you know, active there. But yeah. As Rune, oh my God, I wanted to say Skull Rune for so long, man. Rune's coming in with a $2 super chat. Still going to name my first kid after you, man. Hopefully that's not weird. I just love the freaking name Rune. As he's coming in saying, I don't know about Darnold, but glad to see Cousins go. And yeah, listen, I, here we go. We got Sam Darnold up here at the top one year, $10 million deal. Um, I'm actually excited about Darnold. Um, Rune, and a big reason for that is the support system that the Vikings are able to offer him. Uh, I really do believe if I was a quarterback and I was looking at the whole market and I was like, where could I go that could really, you know, that's, you know, give me the best chance to win, I should say. And I think that would be Minnesota because if you look at this right here, as Colts are re-signing Kenny Moore, which is big news, that's another big corner off the market. We'll get to that in a second. But the Vikings' weapons right now I mean, they're incredible. Justin Jefferson, Addison, TJ Hawkinson. Like, I do think we're going to see the best version that we've seen out of Sam Darnold in his NFL career. Um, yeah, I just, I, just, I just got a good feeling about him, man. I just, I just really do got a good feeling. I just really got a good feeling. But glad to see Cousins go. Yeah, like, listen, I love Cuz, but it was time. Like, no doubt. Like, he has one playoff win in six years here. So, you know, he just got paid $180 million. Was I going to get close to that? Hell no. Nah, I was not going to get close to that. So I think it was the right call. As Rune's coming in again, Rune, you also will get a raffle ticket. I don't know if you saw at the top of the show, but he says, not that I didn't love Kirk, but the future really changes. Or the, but the future really, really, really the, these change. I think you're just saying the future is, you know, looking optimistic. I'm assuming that's what you're saying. But yeah, Rune, totally. Like, Yes, it hurts to watch Kirk Cousins go. I'm still going to root for him. Oh, but the future requires change. Great. Yes, 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 yes. yes. The future does require change. Because now this leaves the Vikings open for tons of possibilities. Like, you know, you go, you go draft a quarterback. You go find a guy, you know, maybe in next year's draft. Or maybe a quarterback is disgruntled. You could trade for him. Like, that's why I love what the Vikings are doing. Because even though being a quarterback away, I know that sounds like you're in a bad spot, but the Vikings have everything else. Like, think about position groups on the Minnesota Vikings that they can just check off. Like, really, like, let's walk through this. Starting on offense, wide receiver, you're good. Running back, you're good. Tight end, you're good. Offensive tackle, you're good. Interior offensive line is really the only need you have on offense, right? And you could go address that in the draft. Maybe you bring back Dalton Ryers and you feel good about that. Now let's kick it to defense. You're probably good at edge rusher now. Patrick Jones, DJ Wanham, Andrew Van Ginkle, 
you know, Jonathan Grenard, interior defensive line, definitely still a need. But linebacker, Blake Cashman, you're good. Ivan Pace, you're good. Cornerback, you need some help. But safety, you're good there as well. So, like, the biggest needs for the Vikings are the trenches, interiors of both offensive and defensive line, and quarterback. Like, I don't think that's necessarily a bad spot to be in. As we got Craig Carton saying the Bears should turn Justin Fields into a wide receiver. That's just disrespectful. That's just disrespectful. But we did cross over $100 in Super Chats today. I want to say thank you guys so much. As let me actually get a check on how many total Super Chats we have had sent in. So, Rune, if you guys don't know, um, we are doing a March raffle here where we are going to be um, giving away this. So a bedside kind of nightstand for the Vikings. It's way bigger than this in person. Um, I can't wait till I get it in the mail for I can actually show you guys. But it's kind of it, like it's floating. There's nothing touching it right here. You can spin it around. This thing is freaking sweet. One of my friends used to have one of these um, for the Buffalo Bills. And these things are freaking awesome. So $5. If you guys want to support the show, you guys could win a pretty cool item. And then every $10 Super Chat we get, we are going to sign your name on the Viking Shotsky Hall of Fame. Um, you know what? I'm just going to add Rune on there right now. Um, oh, Rune, I appreciate that, man. You know, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. But, Rune, we're going to add you to the Shotsky Hall of Fame. But I don't have a marker that freaking works in here. Rune, I'm adding all that after the show. Don't you worry. But if you guys do send in a super chat today, feeling a little generous, we'll sign your name on here. You guys can get to the Skull Hall of Fame. And then I said it, every 50 we get, if you guys are feeling a little generous, I'll shotgun a beer. And then also if we get the 500 total, which we're 400 away right now, I will do a boot. But, guys, I'm trying to stay live here all day. I'll tell you what, if we get to 500, I'll be live for the next couple of hours. So if you guys want to show some love on the show, uh, great way to do so. And right now we are at, let me check this out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're at 10 Super Chats total have came in. I'm going on a 10-minute run. That's the deal of the day. Every single Super Chat, even if it's a dollar, I'm going to go on a run today, and I'm going to go on a 10-minute run as it stands right now. But I'm going to kind of go over a, like all of the signings for Minnesota right now, just kind of wrap it up, and kind of want to just kind of give you guys my thoughts dating back to the start of yesterday. Um was because I liked all the moves for the Vikings. So it started off actually with Johnny Munt. He re-signed with the Vikes on a one-year, $2.5 million deal. As Roger saying, welcome to the board, Rune. Shout out to Rune joining the board. Harvey saying, what do you think about the Chargers might be trading for Justin Jefferson? Um, That would be dangerous, I'll tell you what. Uh, give me that fifth overall pick and a couple future firsts, and you may have yourself a deal. You may have yourself a deal. As Harvey's given the Vikings a C so far. Harvey, not a fan of the moves the Vikings have made. Matt's going B+. Plus. I said I'm giving them an A-. minus. Bart saying Smith to Dallas makes sense. So I, I threw out this trade idea. I don't know if I ever said it in a video. Um, but I was going to say Harrison Smith for Trey Lance trade makes a whole lot of sense. It makes a whole lot of sense. Roger saying I'm still at a B. Yeah, listen, I, I get it. I just, I'm obviously uh, a very optimistic guy when it comes to the Vikings. So, like, I'm probably giving them an A-. Uh, I think it was the right move. Maybe not for, you know, the short term, but for the long term. I think it definitely was uh, the right move. So, I'm going to give it a, I'll give it a, I'll give it an A- minus right now. Yeah, but Johnny Munt was the first move the Vikings made, and then they really started kicking it off here with Jonathan Grenard signed a four-year, $76 million deal. $42 million of that was in guaranteed money. I uh, thought that was a great move. I mean, he looks like freaking Cleo Mack in the, play, uh, in the picture up here. He's a freak athlete, um, young and up-and-coming edge rusher, and I think that deal in a couple years, we're going to be looking at that and be like, damn, man, we got Jonathan Grenard on a four-year, $76 million deal. Hell yeah. But remember this guy, because I'll tell you what, this is a name that I think a couple of us are going to forget when it's week one rolls around, and he's going to have two sacks, and we're going to be like, holy shit, I forgot about Daniil Hunter. Like, I just really think that's going to happen. But then the Vikings also made some offensive lineman moves. David Questenberry did come back. 
Don't know the deals on that, but he'll, he's just a versatile offensive lineman. Blake Brandell, obviously we know that elite um, swing tackle. Not elite. I shouldn't say elite, but a solid swing tackle. Got him for three years, $9.5 million. I think that was a hell of a deal for Minnesota. Keeps him here. He can continuously you know, develop. Um, and then also Andrew Van Ginkle. Love this move. He was actually he was the sixth highest rated edge rusher according to PFF last season. So a two-year, $20 million deal for him. Uh, really like that move. Blake Cashman, uh, love this move. Again, all three moves the Vikings made on defense is a big reason why I am giving them an A- minus here. Blake Cashman, three-year, $25.5 million deal. He was expected to get around three for 35. So him signing to this deal is uh, huge for Minnesota. Keeps him in the state he grew up in. Uh, and overall, yeah, just absolutely love that. As Roger's saying, been a fan for over 50 years. Is it hard to be overly optimistic? Yeah, I get that. I Trust me. I'm a younger Vikings fan. I haven't gone through as much trauma uh, as you guys. Harvey saying, whoops, I thought it was for the re-signing of Johnny Munt. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah my bad, Harvey. Uh, Johnny Munt, my offseason grade so far is a B plus, A plus. B plus right now, A plus if we get our guy in the draft. Yeah, Harvey. Like, if we, if we go get J.J. McCarthy or Drake May, it's been an A-plus offseason. It would be an A-plus offseason, especially if you extend Justin Jefferson to maybe a slightly team-friendly deal. But, um, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Tom Lyles in the chat. What up, Tom? Saying a B grade for the Vikings. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. But then also, guys, the Vikings did sign a kicker. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. John Parker Romo should be the new kicker for Minnesota next season. I think it was in the XFL or USFL, I believe. Um, yeah, so he'll be the kicker there. We have a franchise tag for JJ. That's a dangerous game, though. That's a dangerous game you're playing. Caleb saying we are going 14-3 and if we get our guy for QB. Hey, Dak Prescott went 13-3 and as a rookie. He had a solid team around him. You're telling me J.J. McCarthy can't come in, Drake May can't come in, and he can't be a uh, you know, true starting quarterback and a winning quarterback right away in his rookie year? I agree, Rune. He better be. He better be. But then this news also, Aaron Jones was a big-time move for Minnesota as um, he uh, was brought in on a one-year $7 million deal. I absolutely love this move. Who's Romo? Never heard of him ever. Uh, he was a kicker in the USFL, I believe. Matt saying, I believe you will sign Jefferson to a huge contract before training camp. Mark my words. Matt, I'll remember that comment. I hope you're right. And when they do sign, uh, they when they will, or when they do re-sign Justin Jefferson, extend him, I will give you a shout out on that video. XFL, XFL kicker. Let's go, Jones. Great move. Yeah. So, here, I'll break down Jones really quickly here for you, Rune. Um, so, this is a stat. I showed this on the show a couple times already. It's rushing yards over expected. Pretty much after every attempt, uh, these analytical guys, they go in and they say, all right, on this run, the running back was supposed to get five yards, three yards, whatever it may be. And then they go and actually find out how many yards the running back got. And then they will say, oh, he had, let's just say it's a, you're supposed to get five yards on a run and Aaron Jones falls forward for seven, it's plus two rushing yards over expected. He was number one in the National Football League at plus 151 from the week 16 to the divisional round weekend. So Aaron Jones, kind of the take, kind of the, kind of the take that Aaron Jones is cooked is a dumbass take in my opinion. Uh, he definitely still has a lot of juice left in the tank. But yeah, Harvey, Josh Allen, a freaking quarterback and number two on this list is wild is wild but James Conner at plus 60 or plus 86 Derrick Henry at plus 76 and Pacheco at plus 76 as well and Rune yeah and for great price price one year seven million dollars sign me up for that <clears throat> Caleb I hope you're right man I hope you're right the new kicker is going to kick a game winner to get the number one seed in the NFC from 68 yards being the Packers and Aaron Jones runs for 250 Man, oh, man. So, hey, Vikings also next season. There's already three games I have circled on my schedule. Obviously, both Packer games, they are on there just because the Aaron Jones revenge game factor. But then also, what about the Falcons? 
The Falcons coming back to U.S. Bank Stadium next season, and when Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy or Drake May beats Kirk Cousins on primetime football, that's going to be freaking sweet. That's going to be freaking sweet. Bringing in Josh McCown screams Drake May, right? Uh, yeah, Josh McCown was Drake May's head of high school football coach um, when obviously he was in um, when he was in uh, high school. Oh my God, my legs are so sore. I don't know how I'm going to be run tonight, but I am. Primetime Kirk revenge game. Yeah, could you imagine they put that game on Monday Night Football, Rune? Would you take Kyler Murray? A hundred percent. I love Kyler Murray. You know, I think like people kind of got the wrong kind of impression of him when um when the you know the report came out that like you know he needs to like uh, do a certain amount of like film study per week and all of that. But like Kyler's an absolute talented dude. Uh, listen, I think with these guys like Kyler Murray, um, he was a top ten pick in the MLB as well. Like some of these guys are just different types of athletes, and they're just you know athletes and that's what he is um so i would absolutely love kyler in minnesota could you imagine kyler to justin jefferson and jordan addison man it'd be crazy it would be crazy you think kirk will be wearing dirty bird chains uh i hope not i hope not i'm here summer what's going on baby we've been live for about an hour and 15 minutes Rune saying Kyler isn't as bad as Cardinals are. I live in Arizona. Yeah, Rune, I'm a big fan of Kyler. He's an absolute gamer, man. Jazz heard, or Matt saying, do you tailgate and go to games? Come tailgate with us in the VWO, Vikings World Order. Matt, I do not go to games. We actually, oh, we go live here on the channel for games. Um, a couple of our games this past season, like, got over, like, 150,000 views. Like, it was well, like, freaking awesome. Like, we would have, like, like, I remember the Bengals game last year here on the channel. We had, like, 8,000, 9,000 people watching us live for that game. Um, but, Matt, man, I would love to. Um, but, obviously, you know, you know, working for uh, Chat Sports, you know, we're going to go live for game days. But, shit, man, maybe a preseason game. I could come down there to Minnesota, come tailgate in person with all of you guys. Maybe that will be a ton of fun. But, Matt, appreciate it. Matt, if you got me on Twitter, man, hit me up. If you got me on Twitter, I put it in the chat. Uh, give me a follow. I was there. Eric was there. That Bengals game was wild. As we do have breaking news around the Green Bay Packers, they are bringing back Keon, or Keyshawn Nixon. They're all pro returner on a three-year $18 million deal. So the Packers have paid a returner, they have paid a safety, and they have paid a running back this free agency period. Weird. Weird. And the Packers are a well-run organization. Still waiting for that Kirk to say thanks to the Vikings for all the money he got. Yeah, me too, man. I'm really curious to see how that's going to go. Like, is he going to give – like, I'm sure he's going to give all types of love to Minnesota, no doubt. Oh, Matt, appreciate that, man. Matt, you don't got to do that, but uh, definitely hit me up on Twitter. I'd love to come uh, hang out with you pregame or something if I could ever get down there. That'd be sweet. That would be freaking sweet, man. Go live at the tailgate. That'd be awesome. Kyle will remind me of Dobbs, but way better. Uh, who said that? Mini Jets? Hey, Mini Jets, I know you're a diehard fan. Um, you know, you're a good dude. Don't ever compare Kyler Murray to Josh Dobbs. Josh Dobbs, I mean, it is it is worlds of difference between the two. Like, I see the thought process you're kind of going with there. It's like, you know, those athletic mobile quarterbacks and everything. But, I mean, Dobbs can't sniff Kyler's jockstrap, man. It's Eric showing love to Matt in the chat. Shout out to Eric. Yeah, Josh Dobbs is a uh, – Josh Dobbs stinks. That was a fun Jeremy Lin run. Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy? J.J. McCarthy. As we got some long snapper news here, 
the Commanders are signing Tyler Ott to a three-year deal. Commanders lock up their long snapper. Jameis Winston, some other news today, did go to the Cleveland Browns. That was some big-time news. Jacoby Brissett went to the Pats last night. As the Eagles, some breaking news here, Eagles are landing Devontae Parker. Wow. Eagles getting Devontae Parker. Here we go. Who's gonna be our on, or who's gonna be our running back one? I'll show you. He's he's actually pretty good. It's this guy named Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones will be our running back one this season. Aaron Jones will be our running back one this season. Kind of upset Kenny Moore did go back to the Colts. If you don't draft a quarterback at 11, who do you want the Vikings to draft? Um, I'd go corner. Um, v Lies saying I'm new to your channel, by the way. Shout out to you, man. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button. What do you think about Swift? Uh, the Bears overpaid. Bears overpaid for DeAndre Swift. That's what I think. I'm not – I'm honestly, I, I was kind of scared of the Bears going into the year just because they had the first and ninth overall pick. You know, they got a ton of cap space. You know, they're kind of on the way up in the NFL, but the Bears are going to bear. I'm not – you know, obviously if Caleb Williams ends up being a home run hit, which it's looking like he will be, um, yeah. As Christopher saying, Commander signed Mariota. Do you think – or odds they uh, – odd pickup, I think they're trading the second pick. So I actually disagree with you. I think the Commanders getting Mariota – Lock them into drafting Jaden Daniels. And which means uh, another report came out today that said the Vikings are extremely interested in Drake May, which I think then gets me to this point. If the Patriots are there at number three and Drake May is on the board, I think the Vikings would seriously consider kind of sending a haul over to New England. Eric, never be scared of the division. Never, ever. Never, ever. What do you think about Brandon Murphy? So you're saying Byron Murphy? I think you're saying Byron Murphy. Well, let's get the chat going right now. We got some free agents still on the board. Name a player for me. Speak it into existence that you want the Vikings to sign. DeMargio saying, how about OBJ? I'll say no BJ to that. I'll say no to Odell Beckham. We already have our wide receivers. It would be a fun choice, but I'm going to have to say no. Skull Nations is saying Connor Williams. I would love Connor Williams. Might be too expensive for the Vikings, though, but give me that. Jair Alexander. Give me Jair Alexander. I love it, V-Lyles. I love it. Armstead. Armstead would be sweet. Don't know if the Vikings would sign another edge rusher, but Armstead would be pretty freaking dope. I guess Armstead can play inside as well, but Armstead would be pretty sweet. Skull Nation going Kendall Fuller. Give me Kendall Fuller. Please, 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 please. Eric saying another veteran quarterback. Eric, they're probably not going to do that. I think they're going to keep it the way it is and then go look in the draft for another guy. I really want Kyler. I know he's not a free agent, but still, yeah, I, I would want Kyler. Justin, before any other signings, I agree. I agree. Oh, backup-wise? Yeah, I get that. I could see that. Maybe it's a little Joe Flacco, Eric. A little Joe Flacco. A little Joe Flacco. It's Tyshawn. What up, Tyshawn Neal in the chat saying, good to see you back in motion. Oh, we're back in motion. We're back in motion. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. All right, so I am getting word from my bosses. Just got a slack that we're going to have to sign off here soon if Super Chats don't roll in. I'm going to put on a three-minute shot clock here, and we will be getting into a cut after the show as well. What do you think of Kevin Zeitler? I love him. Love him. I think that would be a great move for Minnesota. Daniel going to Houston. Yeah, it's looking like it. 
It's looking like it. It's looking like it. <clears throat> what would we even trade for Kyler? A whole lot. A whole lot. As Matt, just got your follow on Twitter. Shout out to you. I appreciate it. Give you a follow back right now, my friend. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, Matt. Thank you, thank you, and thank you some more. V. Lyle saying, what are your thoughts on Sam Darnold? Um, I think it was a good move. Good move. I think it's kind of a low risk, not like high, high reward, but I think, you know, I think he's a good backup quarterback, and he's going to be a hell of a bridge guy. He's going to be a hell of a bridge guy. Yeah, so I like that move, man. I, 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 I really, really do. As Matt Stonin, I think I'm saying that right, Stonin, I believe, coming in with a dollar super chat. Matt, thank you so much for supporting the show. Everybody's already typing skull, Matt. I don't even need to say nothing. Shout out to Beastie 10 Gaming. As Jeff Viking. Jeff. What up, man? How you doing? Jeff Vikings. Hope you're doing all good. Um, what's going on? Is Cousins dead? Cousins is an Atlanta Falcon. Um, and the Vikings' new quarterback is Sam Darnold as of right now. Um, and we did sign Aaron Jones, Packers running back. So the Vikings have been making moves. Vikings have been making moves. Yeah, Sam Darnold signed a one-year $10 million deal. Jeff saying, I'm good. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. Yeah, Kirk is, Kirk's not dead, but. We signed Drew Locke too, right? No, Drew Locke went to the New York Giants. Drew Locke went to the New York Giants. You think they'll keep him for years to back up the rookie since he's tw only 26? Um, or think he'll leave? I think it depends. Like, let's just say Sam Darnold goes and balls out this year and he throws for 30 touchdowns, you know, 10 picks. Has a really good season, uh, season, but the Vikings do have a quarterback behind him. I could see him going and getting the bag somewhere else. Cameron, that's my dream, man. That's my dream. You draft J.J. McCarthy, have him sit behind Darnold for a year. What's up, Corey? Corey Gamer Myers. Shout out to you. What up, man? Yo, Corey Myers. Shout out to you. Matt, thank you so much. Saying love your content. Skull Patrick, I got to run. Matt, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good rest of your day. Good luck with everything going on. Um, Yeah, hit me up on Twitter, man. Shoot me a DM. Shoot me a DM. As Christopher... Coming in with a $2 super chat. Shout out to you, Chris, supporting the show. Everybody give me a skull, Chris, down below. As he says, Atlanta could have had Lamar last year for $20 million, for $20 million more. Um, yeah, they could have. Um, remember, the there was that kind of, not like, there was this back and forth with the Ravens and Lamar where, like, obviously he wanted a, you know, a, long-term deal Ravens were kind of being weird about it and then like Atlanta was saying like because they put like the Ravens tagged them but it was like the tag where like a team could still trade for Lamar Jackson you would have to give up two first round picks and extend them uh I wonder if Atlanta's looking at that and being like damn we should have pulled the trigger on Lamar Jackson Corey Myers saying we need to draft JJ McCarthy 100% Oh yeah, Jeff Vikings. That is the Falcons' problem now. That is not our. That's not our uh, problem. <coughs> Mac Jones saying, kind of feels like Sam Darnold is gonna be the Christian Ponder. Um, I like that comparison. But again, you only signed him to a one-year, ten million dollar deal. Let's just say Darnold's terrible. You know, he throws two touchdowns, eight picks in the first four games. Like, it's not the end of the world. Jalen Johnson rune is back with the Chicago Bears. Um, Legeria Sneed, you wouldn't need to trade for him. Tarvey Buxton saying, what do you think is going to happen to Justin Fields? I have no idea. 
maybe maybe the Seahawks. I'll say that. That's that's where Justin Fields is going to go. It's going to go to Seattle. That's my pick. This just goes to show Kirk's faith in the almighty dollar instead of helping Minnesota win championships. What's huge? What a huge waste of money. Go, Sam. Go, Aaron. Let's get something. I love that. I love that. Jeff Viking saying, I'm more interested in what Justin Jefferson is going to do. Me too. Me too. I'm definitely interested to see what Jettas is going to get done this season. Uh, or this offseason, I mean, with his contract. I'm guessing it's going to be around 30 mil a year. Guessing it's going to be around 30. All right, guys. So here's what's going to go down right now. I'm going to get into a cut talking about the latest two guys, Sam Darnold and Aaron Jones. We're going to break them down here live on the channel. Talk about the Vikings possibly trading up for a quarterback as well. As Kiko Cat coming in with a $10 super chat. Oh, no wait, what up, Kiko? Everybody give me a skull key down below. Kiko Cat. Um, what you did the last game of the season was freaking awesome, man. I, I I still remember that. Um, shout out to you. Said, what did I miss? Uh, we'll run through it, man. Here, we'll show you. Actually, got these cool little graphics. We can go through real quick. So the Vikings started off with signing Johnny Munt to a one-year, two-point-five million-dollar deal. Then they signed Jonathan Grenard to a four-year, seventy-six million-dollar deal. And then David Questenberry. Details are still to be announced, but he is back. Blake Brandell will be the swing tackle for the Vikings for the foreseeable future. But overall, love the move of Jonathan Grenard, up and coming edge, 26 years old, coming off a 12 and a half sack season. And then they went and they got Andrew Van Ginkle, Blake Cashman, Sam Darnold, and they actually did get a kicker, John Parker Romo from the XFL, I believe. And then also Aaron Jones, signed for a one-year, $7 million deal. That's the latest around the Vikings. Overall, great move. Overall, I love every single one of them, uh, Kiko Cat. And actually, Kiko Cat, every $10 Super Chat, we're going to sign your name. We got this sweet thing right here. I'll sign it after. I got no, none of my freaking markers work, so that's on me. But we'll sign your name on here after. And uh, you'll also be getting a ticket into our raffle for the year of, or for the year of March, the month of March. As Rune saying Jalen Johnson or LeJarius Sneed. Um, so Jalen Johnson's back with the Bears for a four-year kind of mega deal, so he's not going anywhere. Um, Legereus Sneed, I'm out on Sneed. Uh, I don't want the Vikings to trade for a corner. I would rather just have them try to find it, whether it's free agency or the draft. I don't want to give up draft capital for a corner, considering I do still believe the Vikings are going to try to trade up in this year's draft, um, and go and get a quarterback. But, yeah, it's kind of where I stand right now on my take on Legereus. V. Lyles, or V. Lyles saying, do the Vikings prefer May over McCarthy? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, Kevin O'Connell's a big, big Drake May guy. Sorry, guys. I think we... They're about to get breaking news there. Uh, Cameron saying, do you want Sam Darnold to start as the quarterback? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right, we're going to get into, I got a little video that I'm going to be posting on the channel later. So I'm going to knock this out with you guys live here on the channel. Um, we're going to be breaking down Sam Darnold and Aaron Jones just a little bit more in depth. Can I give you guys my full thoughts on the two? Um, but yeah, man, let's get into it. Let's get into it. If you guys are ready, I am as well. Sam is mid. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll convince you on Sam Darnold here in a second. Uh, but, yeah, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. What's going on, guys? Welcome into Vikings Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Patrick Seatman. The Vikings did just sign Sam Darnold late last night and Aaron Jones this morning. So we're breaking them down a little bit more in depth. I had to make some videos actually at the house, so I wasn't able to kind of fully deep dive into all the deep stats and analytics and really get, you know, what I wanted to say out there on those two, but I got some stats uh, on both those guys, and we'll just be also going over um, the other signings that the Vikings have, and then also later on in the show, I think it's becoming more and more likely as it stands right now 
that the Vikings will be trading up for a quarterback in this year's uh, uh, draft, whether it's J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, or maybe they go big and can somehow land, you know, Jaden Daniels. We'll obviously have to wait and see. But let's start off with Sam Darnold. He is signing with the Minnesota Vikings on a one-year, $10 million deal. And I know people are already freaking out. Sam Darnold on a $10 million deal. Why would the Vikings do that? What a downgrade from Kirk Cousins to Sam Darnold. And I hear you. Like, Sam Darnold is not, you know, going to push the needle for uh, the Minnesota Vikings. It's not going to turn him into a Super Bowl contender. But in terms of him just being a solid backup and a bridge quarterback, I think he was honestly at the top of my list. And people forget about this. This dude was the number three overall pick in the NFL draft for a reason. He's got a big-time arm. He's got big-time athleticism. Um, like, really, I believe in kind of the potential still available there for Sam Darnold as well. And I was looking at some deep analytics on his game from last season, and we'll actually dive into uh, just his old uh, career as a whole. So these are some deep stats from PFF here. So turnover-worthy play percentage. Out of every single play Sam Darnold runs, he causes a turnover-worthy play 3.4% of the time. Obviously, that is about middle of the pack in the NFL. He's got four, he's at 4.1% on his entire career. So no doubt turnovers are the biggest negative of his game. And then also big-time throw percentage. This is actually a positive of Sam Darnold. It's at 3.7% on his career, but 2.0% last year with the Niners. Again, limited sample size, only through 48 passes. But his A dot, average depth of target, is at 8.7 for last year and out of his entire career. His adjusted completion percentage sits at 69.8. And then on his career, it's actually at 72.5. So way higher than his regular completion percentage of just 58 or 59 and a half. I think Darnold, I think he's got the chance to be great here in Minnesota because mainly of the support system the Vikings can offer. And I've talked about this multiple times on the channel. The Vikings are going to be able to offer one of the best support systems for a quarterback out there. You have Justin Jefferson, a true, true wide receiver one. In my opinion, the best non-quarterback in the entire National Football League. You have Justin Jefferson, or Jordan Addison, young and up-and-coming receiver. I think he's got top 10 potential. Obviously, TJ Hawkinson coming off a season-ending knee surgery. I think he'll be good by Thanksgiving. You still got Josh Oliver and Johnny Munt re-signing. And then, obviously, we'll get to Aaron Jones here in a second, but giving him a solid run game behind him. And my take on Sam Darnold, I still think he has the potential to be a true week-to-week, year-to-year starter in the NFL. And he's also a great bridge or a great option to be a bridge quarterback in the NFL, whether it's a J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, whoever you want to draft. And you maybe want to have those guys sit behind a quarterback for half a season, maybe a season or maybe two seasons. I think Darnold offers that to you, where they can learn from Sam. He was just in with the Niners organization. I love the tutelage. I love the kind of uh, just the overall, just kind of smart minds over there. I think like, like not just in football, but in life, a lot of people are a product of their own environment. I think Sam Darnold's just going to take that next step. Uh, obviously, you know, learning from Sean, or Kyle Shanahan and all. I just think Sam Darnold, I, I believe in him a low-risk, high-reward type of move for Minnesota. But this is the move I love the most. Aaron Jones signing a one-year, $7 million deal with Minnesota, and it was needed because looking at some chat stats right now, the Vikings rushing attack over the last two seasons has been terrible. Uh, 27th in Kevin O'Connell's first year in 2022, averaging 97 rush yards per game. But then this past season, The Vikings only averaged 91.4 rushing yards per game, which was 29th in the league. And Aaron Jones would definitely answer that question because, listen, he's a stud, man. Like, looking at his stats over the last four years, he's just been consistent. He doesn't have as many kind of miles on those tires as most people would think. Um, But again, he's great. He's been a great dual threat guy for Green Bay as well. Really been a great leader in the locker room. And I really do believe he comes into Minnesota. And he is a top five player on the, or top 10 player, excuse me, on this roster. And this is a stat I love. It's called rushing yards over expected. So after every game, after every rush attempt, 
uh, some analytical guys will go and watch the film and say, okay, on this rushing attempt, a running back was supposed to get three, five, seven yards. Well, let's just say it's supposed to be a three-yard run, and the running back gets five. It will add two yards to the rushing yards over expected. Well, Aaron Jones, from week 16 to the divisional round, he was at plus 151, a almost 60-yard lead over the guy in second, which was quarterback Josh Allen. Aaron Jones, he killed the Cowboys in the playoffs last season, going for over 100 yards and, uh, you know, having three touchdowns as well. And it gets me to this. This is my favorite signing by far during free agency. There is no doubt about it. Bringing in Aaron Jones was huge for this football team. And it was just overall just – it was just overall one of those moves where it's just like it's, it's not not going to work out, if that makes sense. Like the floor of this signing – is huge. Like Aaron Jones, barring a major injury next season, I think is going to work out. He'll probably run for over 1,000 yards, get 10 touchdowns, and I think him and Ty Chandler will make for a great one-two punch at the running back room. But if you guys want to welcome the new guys to the team, all I got to ask you, drop a like on today's video. Maybe one of their family members, maybe one of their friends is searching up on YouTube, seeing what Vikings fans have to say about him. Well, welcome them to the squad and, uh, yeah, like today's video. See if you get 1,000 likes on today's show. I'd really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs-up icon. It's free and help us out. But Quasi Dofamensa has been cooking this free agency. And I am really just proud, I should say, of Quasi. Like, obviously, I'm not saying he was on the hot seat coming into this season. But he was definitely under a little bit of scrutiny. Because dating back to that 2022 draft class, it was not pretty. I mean, Lewis Seen, as it stands right now, is looking like a true bust in the NFL. Um, and also, like, you know, you got Andrew Booth, Caleb Evans. Like, those guys really work out. And Ingram, like, Brian Asamoah. A lot of wasted draft picks for Kwesi. But look at what he's done so far. I love the move of Johnny Munt. One-year, $25 million deal. Jonathan Grenard, a four-year, $76 million deal. Questenberry details TBA, but I like him. Just giving some depth at that offensive line. And then Blake Brandell, being that solid, solid swing tackle, I like that move, you know, as well. And then you got some more moves on defense that I really like. You got Andrew Van Ginkle coming in at a two-year, $20 million deal. He's one of the highest-rated edge rushers in the National Football League last season. Blake Cashman on a three-year, $25 million deal um, was really, really good. We already talked about Sam Darnold and Aaron Jones. But then also you got your kicker from the XSFL, John Parker Romo. So Greg Joseph will not be the kicker next season. But all of these moves, like, if you just take the Kirk Cousins thing out of it and you just look at what the Vikings truly did this offseason, like, if I had to get of a grade, I've been saying I would give it an A-. minus. Like, I really do believe that. I think Kwesi has been cooking up this offseason. I think he's been putting the Vikings in a direction where it's like, we are entering the KOC and Cam era. Like, we are finally off to Neil Hunter. Probably going to move off Harrison Smith. No more Kirk Cousins. Obviously, no more Zimmer and Spielman. Like, this is the era that Kevin O'Connell and Kwesi Adolfo Mensa wanted to kind of get in. And I would probably have to give it a A- minus grade so far. But you guys let me know. Grade Vikings free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or F. I said A-. minus. Maybe you guys disagree with me. But I really do think Kwesi has done a tremendous job this off season. Now, even though the Vikings did bring in Sam Darnold, I do still think Minnesota does need to trade up and draft a quarterback. And listen, I don't think they have any chance to get Caleb Williams. I mean, Caleb Williams is going to be drafted by the Chicago Bears, and he's going to be in the division, you know, no doubt about it. But looking at some of these other guys, we have heard reports that the Vikings are extremely interested in Drake May. And we got a report saying that if, the, if Drake May falls to number three overall, that the Vikings could offer the Patriots a wild deal to land him. Um, I like J.J. McCarthy, obviously a little bit of a polarizing prospect, you know, a lot of unknown to his game, but I like what he's about. I like the intangibles. And with a guy like J.J., I would love for him to sit for a year in the NFL and really just develop and hone his skill set, maybe put on a little bit more size. He did weigh in at 220 at the NFL scouting combine, which, you know, is solid a lot uh, heavier than a lot of people would have thought originally. But, you know, overall with J.J., I think he would work out in the league. You got Jaden Daniels, even though I do think after the Mariota signing, uh, he will be a Washington commander. And then Michael Penix. I think Penix would be an okay option if the Vikings do sit there at, 
number 11 overall, and they don't want to trade up and go get a quarterback, I think a guy like Penix would be a great, great choice. But if the Vikings get any five of these guys, I think they would work out just because of mainly, you know, the support system that the Vikings would really offer these guys. Like, of having two bookend tackles, of having, you know, an offensive-minded head coach, of having the plethora of weapons that the Vikings can give a guy. Like, I really do believe that this team is setting themselves up to be great in the future. They just need to get the quarterback right, and I don't think that's a bad position to be in. Like, I know everybody's saying, like, oh, who's going to be the Vikings quarterback, yada, yada, yada. Like, look at what the Niners have been doing the past couple of years. They almost made it, or they made the Super Bowl last year with Brock Purdy, the last pick in the draft, in at quarterback. And maybe it's a guy in the middle rounds, like a Spencer Rattler. Maybe the Vikings fall in love with him, and they trade up into the second round, and they go nab him. Like, I really do believe the Vikings, they've set themselves up for the future here, and it's all positive vibes moving forward in Minnesota. And who they draft a quarterback, man, I hope so, because I think it would definitely be worth it. But you guys let me know. It's not would you draft a quarterback, it's will the Vikings draft a quarterback Give me a Y for yes or give me an N for no down in the comments section. Curious to see what you guys got to say. If I'm watching this video, I'm probably typing my Ys down below. I do think the Vikings will draft a guy, no doubt. But I do want to say thank you guys so much for watching today's show. Um, little rumors round up around the Minnesota Vikings here. Uh, obviously, they made some big-time moves late last night and also this morning by bringing in Aaron Jones and Sam Darnold. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel here, trying to hit 23,000 subscribers. See you guys next time. Skull bike. Harvey coming in with a $10 super chat saying, oh, no, Justin Jefferson trade rumors are heating up. Is it beginning to, it is beginning to scare me. Um, uh, Harvey, I hope you're wrong. Um, Harvey, I don't want to call you a liar, but I really want to call you a liar. Because honestly, I just hope that's just not true. I just really hope that's not true. Not scaring me. Not scaring me. Yeah, Harvey, um, I don't think Jefferson's going to get traded. Uh, Quasi was talking at the scouting combine. And he pretty much said like all those rumors are kind of bullshit. Um, I do think a deal is going to get done. Um, but I don't think Jefferson, I think Jefferson wants the Vikings to draft a quarterback because I think he wants to kind of be in that spot where, you know, we think about the future where he's like, all right, next five years, me and Drake may. Yeah, 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 Harvey. Yeah, yeah. I totally see. I mean, people are going to talk about Justin Jefferson getting traded for a while because it's shocking that he's not signed. So there's definitely some truth and some validity behind these trade rumors, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, I just, uh, I just, I, I just don't think it's gonna happen, which is a good thing. Don't listen to the internet besides Pat. Well, I talk about a lot of crazy rumors here on the channel. So, uh, but guys, I do get word. I do have word from my boss. We've been here for about two hours now. I do have to sign off. Um, I'm gonna put a two-minute shot clock on my phone right here. If we don't get a super chat in the next two minutes. We got to sign off, but hey, you guys keep sending in soups. We could stay alive, but I do just want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Show did really well. Um, overhead, uh, about 1,200 people tune in, which is pretty freaking cool. So just want to say thank you. Vikings sadly didn't make any moves when we were live. I was kind of hoping we would get lucky there and that they would sign a defensive tackle. Maybe they do in the next minute and a half, but <coughs> yeah, Jeff, they also said Kirk wanted to stay in mini. Exactly. Will the Vikings give up for a top three pick if they're not willing to trade JJ? A lot of draft capital. A lot of draft capital. Shout out to you, Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. TPG. Oh, you got to get quarterback, man. That's what I would say. I see you got JJ as your profile pick. I'd probably say go get JJ. But we are going to sign off here on the channel. want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. I uh, really do appreciate it. Mini Jets saying peace out. We're going to be posting a video later on today. So if you guys want to check it out, I'd appreciate it. But we're going to sign off here. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to our day two free agency coverage. See you all next time. Skull Vikes, baby.